In today's lecture, we're going to be talking about um, photoreceptors in the eye, properties of light, and then the properties of refraction, including exactly how things are focused into the back of the eye. <clears throat> so when we take a look at the eye itself, this is an eyeball here, and we've studied eye anatomy now at this point, and uh, you know the pathway of light goes in through the front, through the cornea, through the lens, and then all the way to the back of the eye, to the photoreceptors. At the level of the photoreceptors, then, or at the level of the retina, you have several layers of cells, the ganglion cells in the front, a number of cells in between, and then the photoreceptors all the way to the back. The photoreceptors are fairly well known, the rods and the cones. And the idea is that you want light to focus properly so that it is right there at, uh, at the back of the retina, right, so it's focused right on those rods and those cones. So rods, which are um, more numerous in the periphery of the eye, respond to dim light. They are used for peripheral vision because they are in the periphery of the eye. They're highly sensitive. It often takes only one photon of light to sensitize or to create um, a uh, create a, <laughs> a response in a rod. They are low acuity, which means that they do not sense things with great clarity. And they are slow to, to begin working because when it's very bright outside, so they respond to dim light. When it's very bright outside, they're basically turned off. And then when the light uh, dims, they begin working, but it takes them a little while to become, um, become able to work again because of the properties of how things work at a microscopic level within the cell, the retinol and the, uh, the photopigments that allow the, the <clears throat> or allow the rods to do their work. Cones, on the other hand, see if I have a better picture. Cones, and yet, so these long structures here are rods, and the ones that look more like cones, of course, are cones. Cones are well known for sensing colors. We have three different types of cones in our eyes. They respond to bright light. They work quickly. As soon as the light comes on, they begin working pretty much right away. They're found in the very center of where, in the retina, if you go back to the retina, if you go to the very center of the retina, exactly where light would focus in the back of the eye. They're found right in that central part. So this central part is called the macula lutea, best known for the d disorder macular degeneration, where the cells begin to die off over time. And they're concentrated in the central part of the macula lutea, which is called the fovea centralis, literally translated as the central focal point. So they are uh, low sensitivity. They need a lot of photons to work. They are high acuity, they're like high definition, and they're very fast to work, and they respond to bright light and color. When we talk about um, the electromagnetic spectrum, there's a whole bunch of stuff that we cannot see, even though it's you know passing by us all the time, including gamma rays, x-rays, UV rays, microwaves, and radio waves. These are the things that are passing around us all the time, and these are all parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. We are only sensitive, our retinas, our photoreceptors, the rods and the cones, are only sensitive to things in what we call the visible light spectrum, which is only, as you see, a very small slice of the entire uh, electromagnetic spectrum. <clears throat> Other animals are able to respond to different, you know, their, their visible light spectrum might be slightly different. They may have sensitivity to the infrared, uh, some level of infrared light, like snakes do. Some animals, some insects have sensitivity to some UV light and so on, which we are not able to sense either of those types of energy. So the wavelengths of the lights that we can respond to are between 400 and 700 nanometers. And um, as you can see here, we have, um, we have four different types of photoreceptors that respond to different, you know, different wavelengths of light. So what is light? Light is packets of energy photons, also called quanta, that travel in a wave-like fashion at high speeds. And the color of light objects reflect, uh, uh, the color of light that the objects actually reflect determines the color that the eye perceives or receives and then sends on to the brain. What we're looking at here is the refraction of a light. This object, which is kind of a rosy pink in color, looks the same no matter what type of media it's in. But when it's in air, the light is sent um, the set faster. And when it's in water, 
it's a little slower to send. So when something is at an angle in water such as this, it refracts and it looks like it's actually bent into two places or into two different structures. So when light tr passes from one transparent medium to another, its speed changes and it refracts or bends. Now, why are we talking about this? Well, we have, you know, refractory things in our eyes that cause light to bend as well. For example, the greatest refraction happens through the lens of our eyes, which is biconvex. It's convex on one side and convex on the other. It sticks out on both sides. And light passing through a convex lens is bent so that the rays converge to a focal point. When a lens such as this forms an image, the image is upside down and reversed from left to right. So if you take a close look at this, um, what we're looking at here in the top picture is exactly how light would refract through here. You see that it bends as it enters the lens and as it exits the lens, and this causes quite an angular, you know, it, especially at these points at, at, the, at either end of the convex lens, it's going to cause quite a bit of angularity to completely change exactly where the light shows up on the other side. So, and then take a look, you know, closely. Look at the purple. Well, when it's going right through the middle, it just passes through in a straight line. But if it's going through at an angle again, like this straw, it bends at one side, it bends at the other, and this really changes the way that it, it presents itself. So, again, you know, if, you, if you're looking at four squares of all different colors and you look closely, something that's up on the upper left here will be focused on the retina on the lower right. And so everything is reversed and upside down. So upside down and reversed from right to left. Now when, sorry, let me show you that picture again in a moment. <clears throat> The pathway of light entering the eye moves through the cornea, the aqueous humor of the anterior chambers, the lens, the vitreous humor of the posterior segment, and then finally um, the neural layer of the retina in the form of the photoreceptors all the way to the back of the eye. So there's a number of clear substances that light has to pass through in order to properly uh, be focused at the back of the eye. Light is going to be refracted at the, for the most part at the cornea, entering the lens, and leaving the lens. So when we're focusing for distant vision, light from a distance needs very little adjustment for proper focusing. And we talk about distant visioning, we're, we're talking about anything over 20 feet away. So the far point of vision, which is 20 feet, is the distance beyond which the lens does not need to change shape to focus. So it turns out, as light passes through our eye, the lens can shorten, um, can shorten itself and to bulge outward in order to refract light differently. But past 20 feet, it doesn't actually need to do any work at all. When we're focusing for close vision, though, the lens does need to change shape. It's called accommodation. The lens changes shape using the ciliary muscles, the ciliary bodies, including the um, suspensory ligaments, and this helps to increase the refractory power. So that's the accommodation of the lens. Additionally, for focusing for close vision, constriction needs to happen where the pupil needs to constrict to prevent divergent light rays from entering the eye, and this helps to focus just the light that you want to see properly. And then, as we saw in this picture here, if something's very close up, you will have convergence, which is rotation of the eyeballs themselves in the direction of the object being viewed. Now, uh, so, uh, focusing for close vision requires accommodation, constriction, and convergence. All right, so refraction disorders, oops, here we go. Refraction disorders include, well, we start off with the emetropic eye, which is a normal light where light is focused properly, and a normal eye with light focused properly. So it enters through the cornea, it's bent a little bit, it's bent at the lens twice, and then finally focuses all the way to the back of the eye, just where it's supposed to. A myopic eye, which is a nearsighted eye, 
uh, is where the, the focal point is going to be in the front of the retina. The eyeball is simply too long, and the light focuses at a point that is in front of the retina, so it's scattered a bit by the time it actually hits the retina. And this can be corrected with a concave lens, as we see here. <clears throat> a hyperopic eye, which is a also called farsightedness, happens when the focal point is behind the retina, the eyeball is too short, so the eye is focused, the light is focusing all the way back here, but it should be focused up here. So the light has not yet made its uh, uh, ability to be, um, to be at a point yet by the time it passes kind of through the retina, if you will. So this can be corrected with a convex lens, which helps to um, pinpoint the light a little bit sooner. <clears throat> Additionally, there's the presbyopic eye. Over time, you lose your ability to focus properly because of the, the lens. This presbyopia literally translated means um, old person's eye. And what happens with a presbyopic eye is that the, uh, the lens loses its, its ability to accommodate properly. And so this isn't a problem with the length of the eye. Um, the eyes, eyeball itself is no, not necessarily short or long, but rather the lens itself cannot focus properly for close-up things. So this is sort of a type of farsightedness, presbyopia. And then there is an astigmatism. An astigmatism is where you have an irregularly shaped cornea. <clears throat> Many people have astigmatisms. And what happens is that there are blurred visions in, you have blurred vision in many directions. You may have a cornea that is slightly thinner on one side and thicker on the other, or it sort of has a waviness to it. And it's very tricky to correct this type of vision. 